Hi, today we're going to be talking about how to take your correct measurements and to look at a dress that is a commercial pattern that's got dots and to see what is the closest size to fit your body measurements. Hi, this is Tanya Sutherland and all my tutorials and my videos and the courses that I have is about en enhancing your sewing skills, whether you are sewing for yourself, creating your own wardrobe for your lifestyle, or you've taken it one step further and you are actually sewing or designing custom styles or you are designing and creating, you know, garments that you are selling for, as a business. If there's anything else you'd like me to share with you, or do you think you'd like me to sort of, you know, go into more depth? How about leaving me some maybe comments in the comment box below and I can always have a look at it. A particular dress pattern that has got a bust dot as well as contour dots. Right, so here is my file that I've put all my patterns in. I've put the original covers of the pattern into my arch lever file. And then I put a photo stat as well as the pattern inside a little Ziploc packet, which I'll file away in my drawer system, which has got skirts, dresses, jackets, etc. So it's easy for me to find. Let's go through the measurements that you're going to need to actually make the dress and to see what size you are once you've taken your measurements. So the first one will be your bust measurement, which is basically over the apex area. And you must make sure that your tape measure is straight. Always stand in front of a mirror and look at yourself as you're measuring yourself so that you can actually see that your um, tape measure is, is straight. So you're not looking down at your measurements, you're looking across into the mirror, taking your measurements, and then you've got your measurement on your tape measure without looking down. Because every time you look down, your body folds and the proportion shifts, and therefore your measurements could be inaccurate. So write down your bust measurement. The next one would be your waist measurement. If you're not sure where it is, you can sort of wiggle to the smallest point and maybe bend over and where it finds its place, that is where your waist is take that measurement. I like to take an additional measurement, which is your tummy, which is over the navel area, which you can do that as well. This might slide a little bit. So if you stand from the mirror to see where the fullest part is over your navel and take that measurement. Hi, this is Tanya Sutherland. So fashion designer, many, many years of being an image stylist, pattern maker, entrepreneur, all those things together. And I've been bundling it and putting it all together, creating courses and patterns and enhancing skill tutorials. So this is the kind of thing that you absolutely enjoy watching and feeling inspired. Then how about giving me some love? Help my algorithms grow by pressing the like button below, share, as well as subscribe to be basically kept into the loop for every Friday I upload videos to basically talk about sewing for yourself, planning a wardrobe, turning this into a business, and so much more. The next one I like to add as well is your first hip, which is you can actually feel your first, the bone right on top. That is your first hip. You take that measurement. So you're looking in front of the mirror. Take that measurement, take a tape measure away, have a look, write it down. The next one would be the full hip, which most patterns when they have indication for hip, this is the area that they met, they are talking about is the full hip. So you will take it over the full hip, which is usually the widest area of your hip, which could be basically just going across the crutch line. If you are in pear shape, type of body shape, and you find that this area, your, your full hip, is actually smaller than your thighs, and I suggest take both measurements, take that measurement as well, so that we know that the pattern needs to go more out because you have um, more of a pear shape um, body type. Take that measurement, and if you need to take the third hip, which will be for your thigh area, then take it around the fullest area and make a note. The other one would be your bicep, which is basically from shoulder bone to where your elbow is. It's in between there, the biggest area, you will take that measurement. 
you take the measurement and then you can just write that down. The final one would be a sleeve length. So how long do you want your sleeve? Would you want it from the shoulder bone all the way down to um, the end of your sleeve? Or would you like it to be, you know, short sleeve, three quarter, you decide what length that you want. Always make it a bit longer. And when you do your fitting, you can always adjust your sleeve. The final one will be shoulder to waist. So from your shoulder, pretend you have a seam on your shoulder line, like as if you're wearing a garment, there is a shoulder seam. So you put it basically where the seam would be, in the center of your shoulder, over the bust line, into your waist. Feel where your waist is, over the bust. Do your fold if you need to, and then there is your measurement, write that down. The final one would be, is how long do you want your dress? Now I like to work from my waist measurement, so I always take the tape measure with the, the lowest number at the bottom, the highest number on top. I'm standing in front of the mirror and I will see what length I am satisfied with and that is the length I will write down how long I want my, my dress to be. So those are all the measurements that you're going to be needing. Write them down and then I'm going to go through this just like I have with the other two videos that I've done. I'll leave the link down below. We were talking about the skirt and we spoke about the shirt pattern as well. How to basically work out your quarter scale measurements. So the measurements we have taken now is the full circumference of our measurements. We are working on a flat pattern. So we are going to take that measurement. We're going to add ease to it. We're going to add about four centimeters ease, which is about an inch and a half. Just a little bit of mobility. If you want your garment to be more loose fitting, you can always add more. You could add six centimeters if you prefer. So you're going to take your standard measurements you've just taken now on your body, um, starting from all these measurements we've gone through, and you're going to add six centimeters. So on your bust, you're going to add six centimeters. Your waist, your tummy, first hip, second hip, you're going to add your ease, whether it's four centimeters or whether it is six. Once you've done that, what I do is I write down the new total with my, which was my set measurement with the new total with my ease included. There's no seam allowance in this, it's only the ease. Then I divide it by four. Divide it by four because when you get your patterns, your commercial patterns, you'll see that this has been also divided into four, um, into quarter measurements. As you can see, here is the front of the dress and it says place on the fold and you cut on the fold. That gives you a right side and a left side. Then you've got your back and your back tells you cut two times. So that means you have one back left and one back right. So therefore you've got four panels. So we are going to work out our quarter measurement in the quarter of the pattern as the pattern is. So now you can see what size you are more or less. So here is a guideline along the bust line, the waist and the hip already telling you more or less what size this pattern will be, including the ease that they have added into the garment. In this pattern, it's 7.5 centimeters. So I always tell my students, and I would recommend that don't just take this for a guarantee. Double check your measurements because you're spending so much time doing your preparations, you know, cutting out the fabric, sewing the garment together, and all the expenses that you've gone through. So I would rather, you know, measure twice than having to cut twice or to redo it, which costs even more. So let's have a look at the bust. So my bust measurement is 91 centimeters. So I'm looking at the normal bust measurements. So 91, here it tells me a size 10. My waist is 71, yeah it says 71 is size 10. So the fullest part of my hip is 98, so yeah it shows me I'm between a 10 and a 12. So now I'm going to double check. So I'm going to take my quarter bust measurement which is 24 centimeters, I'm working in centimeters, and I'm going to put a mark on my, my tape, which is 24 centimeters, going over where the bust line is from the fold line. I'm taking it over, and when I look at this, my tape measure is basically ending just before the 10. I still need to add seam allowance. So I'm going to make my, um, my bust measurement a size 12, including my seam allowance, including the seam allowance. I'm going to go down to the waistline. The waistline is 71. So with the quarter measurement, after including my ease, is 19 centimeters. So I'm going to put my, my finger on 19, 
put it on the center front. I'm aware these are dots. I'm going to have to jump over the dot because we're not going to um, leave the dot in because when we stitch it, it's going to be closing and changing your seam allowance. So make sure you just jump over your dot. So there is my end of my tape measure. So if I look at this, I still need to add one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So my waist is also a size 12. I'm going to go to the biggest area, which is my second hip, because um, my tummy and my first hip is smaller than my bigger hip. So my biggest area is my second hip and it's 25.5 quarter measurement. I'm going to put my finger again into the tape measure, put it on the center fold, carrying it over where the actual hip line is indicated on the pattern. So I'm not guessing, I'm following the indication line. Once I lay it down there, I can see that my tape measure is exactly on a size 10, but I still need to add my seam allowance, which is one and a half centimeters, a half an inch. So therefore, I am in between a 12 and a 14. So I'm going to write here my second hip. I'm between a 12 and a 14. I want my um, true waistline measurement. So I can see that I'm more or less a size 12. So I'm going to go to the size 12 shoulder line and that is your cutting line. So you need to go into your stitching line, which is one and a half centimeters. I'm going to go more or less in the middle and my shoulder to waist is 45 centimeters. So if I take tape measure and I go all the way down, it's 45. Here is my true waist. So my true waist is two centimeters just under an inch lower than the waist indicated on this particular dress so now i want to write down how long do i want my dress to be so i want it to be 50 centimeters from my waistline i would like my skirt length on my dress to be 50 centimeters but i would like a three centimeter hem so therefore my waist to hemline is 53 centimeters including my hem so I'm going to place 53 centimeters on my true waistline, take it down, my tape measure to the end of the pattern, and then I'm just going to make a tiny little mark, and I'm a, I can see I need to remove 3 centimeter off the hemline of this pattern to give you the measurement that I want. thing is the sleeve so first of all you're going to look at what size was your dress and it was mainly a size 12 so I'm gonna look at the size 12 shoulder and also the side seams were size 12 so now I'm looking at the 12 of the sleeve so you can see with this little notches on the other side that is more or less indicating where your bicep area is so my bicep was 27 plus my three centimeter ease which is not my seam allowance so now I'm going to put the 30 in between the sleeve, these two notches, and I can see that the 30 centimeters plus seam allowance, if I look at the 12 here and the 12 there, this sleeve is more or less um, wide enough for my arm. It's even got a little extra. So I will leave it as is. When I try it on, I can decide whether I want to taper it or not. This is where you decide how long you want your sleeve. You look at your cutting line, and where your circle is, that's indicating your stitching line. Or you can just put your tape measure on the cutting line, measure down one and a half centimeters. And then whatever your sleeve length is, you can actually mark it from this point. 
So you can, mine is 58. Plus I want a three centimeter seam allowance, which is gonna be 61. So I lay my tape measure where the highest point is on the top, the lowest is at the bottom. So now I can see where the end of the tape measure, well, where the line of the end of the sleeve and my tape measure join is 24 centimeters. So I know I need to add 24 centimeters onto my sleeve length if I want the long sleeve. So I can write your sleeve, I'm a size 12, and I need to add 24 centimeters for length, which includes a three centimeter hem. So that gives you a very good idea of um, what size you would be. And the next thing is you would actually just trace this off onto a paper using a tracing wheel and carbon. Um, carbon underneath your pattern and you can go along and trace it with a tracing wheel and mark all the indications around the pattern and then it will come through onto your actual soft paper. You can cut it off, cut it out on your size. I will leave the link down below of one of my patterns, where, one of my videos where I've showed you how to do this. And just to show you how to measure your size, you can also trace it off onto another sheet of paper in your particular size or for a customer size so you're not damaging your true pattern and you're always keeping your commercial pattern as a block pattern for instance. So I will leave the link down below and I'll put some pictures up to show you of the other five courses that I have which is all about enhancing your skills. It's called Custom Fit. It is a series of one to five. You could select which ones you want to do or you can do the pack. It's about showing you how to take your measurements, how to take the measurements, check what size pattern you are, as well as how to trace it off. And it, it just gives you step by step as well as going into a trouser as well. So it's just to help you just to, like I said, enhance those skills and to uplift your confidence that your sewing is just so much more pleasurable. And at the end, you have less and less alterations to do that the garment actually starts fitting you better and better. And of course, that's just going to make you feel absolutely amazing. So my next video for the next um the next week, Friday, will be for the trouser to show you how to take measurements on a trouser and then how to trace off, the, well, how to mark what size you would be on a trouser commercial pattern. So I'll see you there.